Myself, Dr. Gibran Ahmad presents to you Simply Pathology and today we are back with an important lecture. In today's topic of discussion, we are going to continue what we had started in the previous lecture that is Automation in Hematology Part 2. In the previous lecture, we had read in details about the basics of the running of the automated hematology analyzers, what are the principles of the working. Then we had read in details about the RBC parameters. Okay. So today we are going to discuss the remaining part that is the WBC parameters, platelet parameters, what are the newer parameters that has been introduced in the modern day machines and along with that we are also going to see the advantages and disadvantages of automated hematology analyzers. So you have already seen this particular chart. So uh, there are two mixing chambers. So one is the RBC chamber wherein we are doing the RBC and the platelet uh, uh, count and uh, all the parameters are uh, basically evaluated in the RBC chamber in relation to the platelets and the RBCs and the method applied is the impedance and in the WBC chamber the RBCs has to be lysed okay and very importantly what do we me measure here we measure the hemoglobin percentage by spectrophotometry and the WBC count and other parameters that is the differential leukocyte count by the method of impedance okay so let us continue today's topic of discussion if you look at the WBC parameters, so the WBC count, so any cell which is measuring more than 35 femtoliter in the WBC chamber is counted by impedance method. Okay, And the second important parameter that we are going to see is the WBC differential count. So the WBC differential okay, can be done in two ways. One is by three part. Okay, So in cases of three part uh, automated analyzers, okay, so the three part is going to differentiate the WBC into neutrophil mix and lymphocytes and this mix or the middle uh, you know variety in case of normal uh, in individuals comprises of monocytes eosinophils and basophils okay and this is basically based on electrical impedance based volume measurement of the cell this is the principle okay and the three part is generating histograms as well that is the rbc histogram platelet histogram wbc histogram they are created by the three part machines as well Whereas the five part automated hematology analyzers, if you see, okay, so they are basically differentiating between the individual uh, white blood cells that is neutrophils, eosinophils, monocytes, lymphocytes and basophils separately. Okay, and they are based on out of on the principle of impedance as well as optical uh, scatter plus minus uh, some machines might, uh, you know, use VCS technology or peroxidase staining or immunological methods as well. Okay. So the five part, they are not only creating the histogram, they are also creating scatter plots. Okay, they also create scatter plots or scatterogram. What are they? We are going to discuss about them in the later half of the video. So these are the two important parameters. Okay, that is basically, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, um, uh, discussed under the WBC parameters heading. Now we are going to try to understand what a WBC histogram looks like. So this is the normal WBC histogram. So the size they are plotted against the X axis, whereas the frequency and the count is on the Y axis. Okay. So as we can appreciate the analyzer, they sort the WBCs according to the nuclear size into three groups. So there are three groups. Okay. One is the lymphocyte, one is the middle group, one is the granulocyte group. So any cell which is between 35 to 90 femtoliter is counted as the lymphocyte. Those between 90 to 160 femtoliter, they are coming under the mid mix or mononuclear variety. So they have many things, okay, we will discuss. And those who are under the 160 to 450 femtoliter range, okay, they are counted as the neutrophil, okay. So this is how the machine is differentiating between the three uh, population of cell, that is the lymphocytes, the mixed group and the granulocytes. The mix or the mid or the mononuclear group of cells, okay, in normal individuals, usually they comprise of a mixture of eosinophils, monocytes and basophils, okay. But they might also contain blast, immature granulocytes in case of left shift or atypical lymphocytes, okay. So they might also harbor, uh, you know, uh, uh, some atypical cells. So that is why when the mid or when the mix is very high, okay, ideally you should go for a slide review, okay, you should completely examine the peripheral blood smear to rule out any kind of atypical cells like blast cells, okay. Now, if you see this is a normal scatterogram or scatter plot, usually you will see uh, such scatterograms in five part automated hematology analyzers. So, 
what is happening so with the help of optical scatter principle and also fluorescence so they can completely divide the wbc's under the five headings so how they do that so there are two types of graph over here the first graph okay so in the x axis we are plotting the side scatter and in the y axis we are plotting the fluorescence so if you remember we have already discussed the principle of optical light scatter and over there i have discussed what is forward scatter what is side scatter what is the fluorescence as well okay so you can go back to that particular slide and you might revise and then come back and see this slide so what so on the basis of this uh, plotting that is the side scatter and the fluorescence okay so the cells can be divided for example this group of cells they are the monocytes this group of cells they are the lymphocytes this group of cells comprises neutrophils along with basophils and this group of cells comprises the eosinophils okay now to further uh, you know uh, to further differentiate between the neutrophils and the basophils we have the second chart or the second scatterogram wherein on the x axis we are plotting the side scatter and on the y axis we are uh, you know we, we are plotting the forward scatter okay so what we see over here under this wbc basophil uh, you know scatterogram okay so this group of cells they are comprising only of the lymphocytes monocytes neutrophils and eosinophils but the basophils are somewhere around here okay so over here uh, with the help of these two scatterograms you can completely differentiate and take out the individual percentage of individual WBCs okay in this particular manner now always remember one thing that for any of the parameters whether whether it be RBC WBC or even the platelets okay so whenever any parameter okay whether it be RBC WBC or the platelet it becomes or it shows abnormality then the machine is going to flag that particular data or that finding okay so what are RBC flags? So already we have discussed about the RBC flags when we were discussing the abnormal histograms in relation to the RBCs. So right now I am just going to label those abnormal histograms. So already we have seen them. So I am not highlighting again. So there is an RL flag. L stands for lower discriminator. Means when the lower discriminator is not touching the baseline or is showing a high takeoff. That is RL flag. Then there is RU, U stands for upper discriminator. So when the upper discriminator is not touching the baseline or is showing a high takeoff, okay. And then we are having multiple peaks shown as MP, okay, which is suggestive of dimorphic anemia or iron deficiency anemia patients who are on therapy or post transfusion. So we have already seen such histograms. I'm not showing again, just to revise, okay. So this is the RL flag. So you can see that the lower discriminator is not touching the baseline or showing a high takeoff then on the right hand side this is the ru flag wherein the upper discriminator is not touching the baseline and then sometimes you are having two peaks as you can appreciate one two that is mp or multiple peak flag okay so whenever any abnormalities is there they are flagged by the machine so what is flagging when a machine reading is showing a flagging that means it is mandating you to examine that particular case with the help of the peripheral blood smear. So you have to examine the PBS in such cases. Okay. Now the WBC flag. Let us look at the WBC flag. Now first of all, let me show you this WBC histogram over here. If you look at the percentage of lymphocyte, it is around 18 or 19 percent so this is the lymphocyte group this is the middle group this is the granulocyte group the so lymphocyte groups so if you see the curve it is small only it is around 19 percent if you look at the granulocyte it is around 75 percent so it is uh, bigger as compared to the lymphocyte and the mid is around 5.3 it is uh, mid okay so everything seems to be in the normal range so basically this looks like a normal histogram according to whatever findings we are getting over here okay so now we are going to you know we are going to examine okay the wbc histogram in relation to the abnormalities that we see now for example if you look over here normally lymphocyte peak is here okay this is the middle peak and this is your granulocyte peak so over here what you see that lymphocyte peak is raised and the granulocyte peak goes down so basically we can see lymphocytosis along with neutropenia so this is indicative of a viral infection Similarly, sometimes what might happen that the lymphocyte okay, uh, uh, peak goes down whereas the granulocyte peak goes up. So it is indicative of neutrophilia, indicative of bacterial infection. Okay. Then there are different kinds of flags. Now as I told you as in the RBCs there was RL flag so there is WL. WL means again the lower discriminator that you can see is not touching the baseline. Okay, It is having an abnormally high takeoff. So what are the conditions when you can get uh, you know a high takeoff when there is presence of NRBCs, P 
platelet clumps, large platelets, cryoglobulin or unlysed red cells. In that case, you can get a high or abnormally high takeoff at the lower discriminator. This is the point of the lower discriminator. Similarly, there can be abnormally high takeoff at the upper discriminator that is going to display the WU flag. Okay, so as you can see, there's a high takeoff over here, which is not touching the baseline at the upper discriminator. So what is the basic cause when there is a severe neutrophilia, you will see such kind of flag WU flag. Okay. Now, there are certain situations, okay, normally you see that there is a plateau in between these two mountains. So, this is one mountain, this is another mountain or peak. In between that, we can see that there is a plateau. But sometimes what you will see that in this plateau area, you will see peak. So, the peak can be here, the peak can be here, the peak can be here as well. So, whatever the reason, because of whatever population you are seeing a peak, okay. So, that can be because of multiple reasons. So, this is a type of a flag wherein you cannot see any plateau. So, no plateau is seen between the discriminators, okay. So, some peak, what you will see, you will see some peak. For example, in this particular example, we are seeing basically a peak over here. This is the peak and this peak is in the plateau area. So, you see the presence of some peak in the plateau region, okay. What is the cause? Some Suppose there is presence of reactive lymphocytes. These are lymphocytes which are larger than the usual. So, the peak shifts to the you know little to the right of the main lymphocyte peak or there might be presence of blast cells again the blast cells percentage might be high and they lie in this area only then normally in this area eosinophils basophils monocytes they are lying so any of these finding when there is eosinophilia monocytosis or baso Again, uh, you know, there will be peak in between the lymphocyte and the granulocyte and sometimes plasma cell leukemias can also occur which will show a peak in the plateau area. Now, usually, usually this is the basics, okay, and with machine to machine, the flaggings might vary, means the name of the flag might vary, but the basic abnormalities are the same, only the representation is different. So, this, these kinds of flag, they are given in Tejinder Singh. So, I am just, uh, you know, highlighting these flags so that uh, if in the exam, if in the exam, they are asking you to label a particular flag, then you might label them, okay, like this. So, there is a T, T1, T2 flag. So, these are in relation to this particular abnormal histogram only. So, what is the T1, T2 flag? Okay, whenever a discrimination between lymphocyte, okay, the mixed cells and the neutrophils is not possible, the machine gives a T1, T2 flag. Now, T1 is pointing towards the presence of abnormal cells and T2 is pointing towards a higher leukocyte count. Whatever be the cause, in case of T1, T2 flag, you have to examine the peripheral blood smear. Similarly, you are having F1, F2, F3 flag. Now, what is the meaning of this F1, F2, F3 flag? So, whenever the different fractions of cells, they are not pure or they have certain mixed elements in them, then you are having the F1, F2, F3 flag. Okay. So, F1 flag is given when the small cell percentage is inaccurate or small cell inaccurate whenever for example, there is ALL, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. In that case, you might get an F1 flag. Then you have a middle cell inaccurate flag whenever, so in that situation, you will get an F2 flag. It occurs in case of AML or monocytosis and there is a large cell inaccurate flag that is an F3 flag. So, these are the three different types of flag whenever the cell fractions are not pure or they are mixed in nature, okay. So, these are all the WBC flags that we have discussed, okay. So, there is a WBC L flag, WBC U flag, there is again T1, T2, F1, F2, F3 flag as well, okay. So, we have discussed about the WBC parameters. Now, we are going to discuss about the platelet parameters. So, the first important parameter that we will see is the platelet count. Again, just like any other count, okay, they are counted by the method of electrical impedance method where in the RBC aperture. So, I have already spoken about that before. So, platelet is basically evaluated in the RBC chamber as we can appreciate over here. So, uh, this is a normal platelet histogram. So, if you look, if you look, the normal platelet histogram, it is slightly skewed towards the right, okay. So, the normal platelet histogram is a right skewed single peak. So, there is a, a single peak and it is slightly shifted towards the right. So, this is a right skewed single peak, okay. Now, the counter is going to designate particles between the size of 2 to 20 femtoliter as platelets. And again, this is not a very hard and fast range. Different counters, different companies, they are having different, slightly different ranges, okay. So, you might uh, safely use this term and you can label, okay, is not an issue. Now, if the platelet count, okay, if it is low in the analyzer, support the machine reading is giving low, okay. 
इट शुड बी कन्फर्म्ड बाय एग्जामिनिंग द पेरिफेरल ब्लड स्मियर ओके व्हाई इज इट सो बिकॉज वी वांट टू रूल आउट स्यूडो थ्रोम्बोसाइटोपिनिया व्हिच अकर्स बिकॉज ऑफ द यूज ऑफ ईडीटीए एंटी कोएगुलेंट व्हेन वी आर कलेक्टिंग द ब्लड सैंपल फॉर सीबीसी ओके बिकॉज दिस ईडीटीए कैन इंड्यूस प्लेटलेट एग्रीगेशन एंड दे माइट फॉल्सली शो अ लोअर प्लेटलेट काउंट सो इन द पेरिफेरल ब्लड स्मियर यू माइट सी सेवरल क्लम्प्स ओके so in that situation remember one thing that it is not true thrombocytopenia it is thrombocytopenia has been there because of edta induced platelet aggregation because the platelet aggregated they was looking big so the machine did not count them as platelet okay and falsely the machine showed a reduced count also remember this kind of problem or this kind of of limit, the, you know this this is one very commonly faced problem in the laboratory so this is one of the most common problems that you face when you are using edta blood sample normally we are using edta blood samples only okay and this is one of the commonest problem that you will come across when you are you know working in the uh, central labs okay in the hematology section whenever you are reporting slides you will see that majority of such slides their platelet count is completely fine but they are showing pseudo thrombocytopenia with that that occurs because of edta induced platelet aggregation so when you examine under the peripheral blood smear you will see that the platelet count is all right okay so this is one of the very commonly uh, encountered problems in automated uh, cbc reports okay now how do you confirm and how do i say that it is edta induced only so when you are you know when, when you see a platelet histogram okay in a edta uh, collected blood sample you will see that there is serrations okay so the platelet histogram shows serrations okay so whenever you are seeing edta in you know blood sample and when there is edta induced platelet aggregation they will show a serrated platelet histogram which occurs because of edta induced platelet aggregation which leads to pseudo thrombocytopenia okay now what you do from the same patient now how you can eliminate this error if you if you just uh, you, you, uh, you know if you instead of using edta you know vials you use citrated blood sample okay in that case when you see the curve again becomes normal okay so when you are collecting the blood sample in citrated uh, you, you, uh, you know when you are using citrate uh, anticoagulant then you will get again a normal curve uh, you know with blood drawn into the citrate cube so again the curve becomes normal like this okay there is no serrations over here so this proves uh, that edta is falsely inducing pseudo thrombocytopenia because it is inducing platelet aggregation okay so what is the importance of this that whenever machine is giving a lower count you should always confirm on the pbs because majority of the cases is occurring because of edta induced pseudo thrombocytopenia because of edta induced platelet aggregation okay now we will look at the different kinds of platelet flag so just like in the rbc in the wbc there was rl wl similarly there is a pl flag pl means again you can see over here that at the lower discriminator there is abnormally high takeoff so this occurs because of the presence of cytoplasmic fragments okay and sometimes you will also see a pu flag that is th there will be you know that that is this this is the upper discriminator normally they are touching the baseline so uh, uh, you know over here when the uh, the histogram is not touching the baseline so when there is abnormally high takeoff at the upper discriminator so it mainly occurs because of the presence of giant platelets or severely microcytic rbcs or because of the presence of platelet clumps okay so this is the reason of pu flag so with this we have completed all the different kinds of flags that we see okay okay now if you are looking at thrombocytosis when the amount of of you know platelet is very high so the curve will be higher so this is indicating thrombocytosis and when there is thrombocytopenia the curve will be lower so this is indicating thrombocytopenia the next important platelet parameter that we are going to see that is the mean platelet volume so it is basically denoting the average size of the platelets in the blood normally the mean platelet volume is in the range of 7 to 11 femtoliter now before we go further with the importance of the mpv i would first like to make you understand that whenever you come across thrombocytopenia okay now the cause of thrombocytopenia can be twofold first of all one kind of thrombocytopenia can occur because of increased peripheral destruction of the platelets because of any reason one of the examples is itp immune thrombocytopenic purpura 
Now, in this condition, you have to remember that the bone marrow is normally functioning and they are active. So, in response to thrombocytopenia or in response to peripheral destruction of the platelets, they will increase the productivity of the platelets and not only that, because they are so much active, there will be increased amount of immature platelets and immature platelets are characterized by the presence of larger platelets and those platelets which are containing more amount of RNA. So, what is the importance over here? So, larger the size of the platelets or if the platelets are more immature containing more RNA, then it is pointing towards thrombocytopenia because of peripheral destruction of platelets. That is the importance that we have to remember. We have to remember any large platelets or platelets containing more RNA is pointing towards a normal active bone marrow, but which are producing immature platelets and it is pointing towards uh, thrombocytopenia because of peripheral platelet destruction. Okay. Whereas on the other hand, thrombocytopenia can also occur because of a decreased production of platelets from the bone marrow. Now, this occurs in case the bone marrow is diseased, for example, in case of aplastic anemia. Okay. So, these are two of the, you know, very important, you know, differentials that we have to make. And if the clinician can get an idea what is the cause of thrombocytopenia, it is quite useful for them for starting treatment. Now, when the plat mean platelet volume increased MPV, okay, that is more than 11 fem uh, femtoliter, it is indicative of a large platelet and as I already told you, when the platelet is large, it is indicative of peripheral platelet destruction, example ITP. Whereas the reduced MPV, less than 7 femtoliter is indicative of reduced platelet production in the bone marrow, indicative of smaller platelets, example in cases of diseased bone marrow like aplastic anemia. So, what are the uses of mean platelet volume first very important finding out the cause of thrombocytopenia whether it is because of peripheral platelet destruction or it is because of a diseased bone marrow which is not producing platelets then it is also helpful in the classification of the inherited causes of thrombocytopenia again it is also a predictor of thrombotic risk now remember more is the mean platelet volume more is the risk of thrombosis. Why? Because more MPV is indicative of larger immature platelets and such large immature platelets, they are quite reactive and they can readily, uh, you know, cause thrombosis. Now, it is also, MPV is also serving as a prognostic marker of MDS. How? Now, increased MPV is pointing towards larger platelet that is showing that the bone marrow activity is there in response to thrombopoietin. Now, usually in MDS, there are different kinds of cytopenias. So, the patients are being administered certain growth factors like thrombopoietin so as to stimulate the platelet count. Okay. So, what happens that when you are giving thrombopoietin to such patients and if the MPV increases, that is showing that the bone marrow is, is the basically, uh, you know, it, it is re, it, the bone marrow is basically uh, responding to the thrombopoietin and increasing the platelet production. So, that is indicative of a good prognosis in a patient of MDS. Whereas, in severe MDS cases, the bone marrow may not respond to the thrombopoietin administered and the MPV will reduce. That is indicative of a bad prognosis in cases of MDS. Okay. The next important platelet parameter is the platelet distribution curve which is very much similar to the red cell distribution width okay now